good evening everyone today i'd like to share with you our journey at vedanto in building an online platform using webrtc vedanto is a live online tutoring platform that enables personalized learning between uh, by connecting students to high quality teachers and providing them the convenience and flexibility of uh, uh, teaching and learning anytime anywhere vedanto operates as a marketplace of teachers teachers are onboarded onto our platform using a highly strict and rigorous interview process once they are onboarded onto our system students can find them on our platform uh, students can find the teachers on the platform they can start engaging with them uh, they can chat with them they can take a trial session with them and finally end up paying subscriptions with them as in any open marketplace uh, the teacher sets to set their price point based on the market dynamics while the students get to rate the teachers at the end of every session it all started when we wanted to validate our vision on what vedantu is all about is online education even viable in india uh, will parents be even comfortable sending their students to study online and uh, will parents be even comfortable paying for it and more importantly will technology be a bottleneck operating in the indian conditions these are some of the basic questions that we had in mind before we went on to validate our vision <coughs> about online education well after we launched on uh, november 2014 we have clocked about more than 60000 hours with more than 12000 hours month over month that's happening right now and we have a vibrant community of uh, teachers uh, over over 200 plus uh, vibrant uh, i mean teachers in our marketplace with more than 3500 paying students with over 250 cities in india the last part is a bit of a surprise for us because when we started with we started very small and uh, that 250 cities that's there is is due to the power of webrtc right i mean we started out with uh, trying the peer to peer web rtc started very small and uh, and uh, and grown very big uh, in the last 16 months central to, central to the live online live classroom experience is our interactive whiteboard what we call as our wave environment which is the whiteboard audio video envir environment it's a very interactive and collaborative environment that makes uh, teaching and learning fun for the uh, teachers and the students it's a central and core part of our product uh, we first built it on the web uh, and then later built it on our android mobile platform as well so it contains of four major components as you see, can see on the right hand side uh, that is that, uh, hello the bottom most part is the textual chat uh, that ha helps a teacher and students interact uh, based on textual chat that's powered by a messaging framework called pubnub um, the whiteboard uh, that that you see there uh, interactive whiteboard is our proprietary technology where we capture the teacher strokes send them efficiently over the network on the other side where is where it is redrawn on the uh, student side the audio video part of this is powered is what is powered by webrtc so webrtc i mean the p2p model of webrtc was a very natural fit for our one is to one model of teaching our one is to one is to one model is a premium offering from uh, vedantu where a teacher is involved in teaching only one student it's a very highly interactive personalized and focused session and uh, this is how we started out with we started with a standard deployment for our uh, our one to one thing uh, one to one uh, sessions we have a we had a coturn server that that satisfies the stun and the turn requirements we have a, our own signaling server that takes care of the signaling whiteboard data statistics and recording while the media went through the uh, peer connection we would have loved the i mean this is a very very perfect use case for a peer to peer webrtc application we would have loved the whiteboard data to have gone through the data connection but for an issue with firefox uh, that doesn't detect the underlying trans transport disconnections so what happened was the teacher used to start writing on the board uh, while the uh, while without knowing that the underlying peer got disconnected which led to a bad experience so this made us not use the data connection for, of webrtc but rather we uh, made the web data we relate the web data over our own proprietary connection so uh, this is how we started we started very small and we started growing we started stabilizing our technology uh, everything was going fine till we hit the requirement of uh, recording there so we needed recording for 
these purposes, right? I mean, one is we definitely needed, uh, students needed it for uh, session replay. They wanted to figure out wh what happened uh, to revise the sessions. They also need, uh, I mean, we ourselves needed it for academic conducting, academic review as to understand how the sessions went. And we wanted uh, the audio and the whiteboard data to be recorded for our own engagement analysis, uh, interaction analysis. So what we started doing was we started to try and implement recording on top of the existing P2P uh, uh, WebRTC architecture. So we started trying to do too many things, I mean a lot of things, uh, but none of them worked. I'll, I'll go through our journey here. So we, uh, we first wanted to record both the audio streams on one of the peers and allow them to save the recordings once the session was over, right? Similar to what a go-to meeting does. But uh, that couldn't happen because uh, Chrome didn't have the facility of recording the remote audio since recently uh, they have implemented it. But when we started out with, uh, that wasn't an option. So what we did was we started, uh, we had to record the remote streams on either sides and start sending it up to the cloud. So where uh, we had to uh, stitch it and uh, use it for replay. Now uh, what happened was uh, when we did this, when the session was happening, it started competing with the upload bandwidth of the live session causing problems with the performance. So we had to wait till the session got over. Now when the session got over, our, our sessions actually last for about 60 minutes, right, which, uh, which translates to about 50 MB of data once the session is over. So we had to upload 50 MB of data, right, and uh, there were behavioral issues as well. Uh, students used to close the browser immediately after the session is over. So we used to lose the recordings. And uh, also the teachers used to have back-to-back -back sessions. So they are going to a different session, thereby we started losing recordings uh, there. So what we decided was, okay, why not reduce the size of the recordings from 50 MB? So what we started doing was we sampled the audio at a very less rate. I mean, we compromised on the audio quality. They were reducing the size. We reduced it to 4 MB, right? And then uh, and, and then check this out. But again, uh, what happened is this led to CPU consumption on the client side. So with our mobile implementation, what it ended up was it started consuming mobile CPU, uh, CPU on the mobile side. Now, uh, finally we realized that, I mean, um, Implementing recording with the P2P WebRTC uh, model uh, doesn't work because the the, the amount of local storage and the time to synchronize the recordings up to the cloud is not under our control at all. So we were looking for to move the entire solution, I mean, uh, to move to a media server based model uh, and centralize the architecture. And this coupled with our one to few model as well, uh, which is coming up, uh, led us to start thinking about a different architecture rather than the P2P WebRTC architecture. So one to few is another model of our teaching where a small group of students uh, uh, learn from a teacher. It, it, it opens up peer learning group dynamics while keeping the personalization intact. So what we have started doing now is we have started evaluating a few uh, open source media uh, servers out there, uh, stuff like Jitsi, uh, Curento, Likeout, and uh, we are also evaluating third-party media stream providers like just like OpenTalk, uh, Candy, right? So uh, we are evaluating and we are in the piloting phase. We are planning to uh, ship this by the end of this month. Moving to the centralized model uh, solves our recording problem very elegantly because uh, now uh, all the media goes through the media server from where it is stored and recorded. And it also brings in all the uh, server side good goodness that uh, other folks were talking about simulcast, which allows the receivers to, uh, I mean, uh, receivers to opt for their streams based on their receiving bandwidth. Now, uh, when we started scaling up, uh, when the number of sessions uh, started increasing, uh, we needed to understand the quality of the sessions, right? I mean, uh, from both uh, the academic perspective as well as from the technology perspective. Now, uh, obviously we have now, the, that's why we wanted the recording as well, right? So, uh, though we don't know the content what went into the conversation, but we could capture a whole host of parameters that went on to the conversation, right? So, so that we can conduct the conversation analysis, tone analysis and pace analysis, and from the white, since we have the whiteboard data, we know how much of the whiteboard is used, what colors were used, uh, how much interactive was it, was shapes were drawn, was annotations done. So all of these uh, uh, analysis helped us in figuring out how interactive the session was. So we came to, a, 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 so we started flagging sessions, which we deemed uh, not interactive at all. And uh, now started uh, reporting that back to the teachers 
who can now start changing their behaviors to uh, make the sessions more interactive. So what happened is from the quality check, we started moving towards quality control. So this is very important for us. I mean, as we started scaling from the technology perspective, we had to understand exactly what happened when a session happened between the peers. So uh, I mean, since the session happens between the peers, we had to uh, record all the crucial statistical parameters uh, every few seconds and, and then upload it to the cloud. So these are some of the parameters. I mean, there are much more. Uh, we couldn't put it in one slide. So this is the audio bit rate, packet loss, jitter buffer, jitter, latency. Uh, disconnect. So there's a host of network parameters we actually record every second, right? And uh, display, send it over uh, uh, to our cloud where we put it in a, a time series uh, database uh, from which we actually lay down all these things on a time timeline. So uh, this helps us in a few things. One is uh, it helps us understand the network conditions that are prevailing in our teachers and students community and also give them the feedback to move to a better uh, internet connections if they find themselves having a bad connection. <coughs> Sorry. And um, for the support team, uh, it is very, very crucial to understand the quality of the voice sessions that we, we have been having. There are scores like MOS and, MOS and PESC uh, that are already in vogue in uh, the SIP industry and uh, we needed some score like that to understand what, what happened to the vo voice quality. And uh, with this, uh, a support team actually understands what exactly happened when teachers or students complained about the quality of the technical quality of the session. And of course, because we uh, record the audio, this is very crucial uh, and, and used in correlation with the engagement analysis that I described earlier. So uh, we have just released our uh, teachers and student app. And with it, uh, we have taken our uh, entire uh, Vedantu learning experience on mobile. Uh, it was a very interesting journey. So we, ha we, we actually compiled the binaries required using the Chromium uh, Depot tools, uh, supporting the x86 and ARM architectures, and uh, which approximately increased our, um, our APK size by about 5 MB. And uh, with this, now uh, teachers and students now have the mobility to take their sessions on the go. And uh, they can take the sessions between mobiles and between mobile and browsers. Uh, so it's, it's uh, teachers and students are pretty much excited about it. Uh, uh, we are now have more than 300 hours of live sessions happening in the last few months. Uh, a few statistics are there. Uh, it, it takes about 15 to 20 percent of battery consumption for uh, a one-hour se uh, session, which is our usual average for uh, a, a teacher-student engagement, and uh, that's uh, it approximately has two to three disconnections, which is on the higher side, uh, uh, which we are working on. So these are some of the interesting statistics that uh, that we have uh, seen from uh, operating for the last 16 months. So our average uh, session duration is about 60 minutes. Our turn usage, as you can see, is uh, pretty much on the higher side. Uh, ideally, uh, around 15 or to 20 thereabouts is, is ideal. But it's uh, but th that reflects the topology of the the uh, folks that we have here. Uh, the number of disconnects per session is still on the higher side. We love, love it to be uh, less than one, one because each and every disconnects here actually impairs the session flow uh, because uh, this is not a casual conversation. This is similar to what we have in healthcare. Uh, this is an intense uh, conversation between and a highly engaging conversation between the teacher and uh, student. And every disconnects there uh, takes a lot of time to re-establish <coughs> re the context and flow for the teacher uh, to resume the session. And then the cloud telephonic calls. So uh, when we really figure out that uh, we cannot conduct a viable session uh, because of the because of the quality of the network, what we do is uh, we actually cut off the AV and then connect the teachers and students over a cloud telephonic call uh, or or switches like free switch or uh, asterisk. Uh, while we still allow our whiteboard data to go through the internet. So this uh, because our whiteboard data operates at a very low bandwidth. Uh, about 50 to 60 kbps is uh, good enough for uh, the session to go on. So quite a bit of sessions, if you see, happen on that. Uh, that is a reflection because of uh, the 250 cities that we have said. The, most of them are tier 2 cities from where they have a very, very bad and flaky internet connection. The rest of the parameters are pretty much uh, on on good side. Uh, the initial establishment time, connection establishment time is about 1.7 seconds. The RTT is around 272 milliseconds. And the JIT and packet loss, uh, JIT is a pretty good level at 7 milliseconds and packet loss at 0.08%. At, uh,
So I've already detailed a couple of issues. Our main issues were one is uh, not being able to record uh, the remote peak recording uh, uh, on both sides. That was an issue with Chrome until recently. Now it's been fixed. And uh, about the WebRTC transport termination issue that was still uh, uh, in Firefox, because of which we are not able to detect the underlying transport detection. So that was the reason why we couldn't use the whiteboard data over the data connection of WebRTC. And apart from that, there's a minor annoyance with Firefox pop-up. Uh, uh, when it pops up to take the permissions of the camera and audio, it takes a while. It takes sometimes about seven to eight seconds for the pop-up to come up, uh, which actually delays the connection establishment uh, before a session starts between a teacher and student. So, well, after uh, operating uh, for a while, uh, obviously we are pretty much excited to have a VP9 uh, making it to WebRTC and look forward to all its uh, goodness in terms of uh, network uh, being very network efficient, uh, bandwidth efficient. Uh, we'd definitely love to have something like what all the SIP guys uh, do, something like what FreeSwitch gives in terms of uh, call duration or CDRs, which actually summarizes what exactly went on the call. So uh, right now we actually monitor, I mean, we had to poll the stats API every few seconds to get this information, but uh, it will be great if uh, uh, we have an API that summarizes the statistics after the session is over. And uh, right now we had to uh, actually uh, meddle with the SDP for uh, setting bandwidth rating limitation, right? I mean, uh, it would be great to have some APIs, uh, standard APIs for doing that. Yeah, so uh, we are, I mean, we started with the vision of uh, democratizing education and we are committed to uh, connecting uh, students to high quality teacher. Our vision is to build a vibrant marketplace of teachers, connect them at scale, uh, and, 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 and of course, truly democratize education. So in our journey, uh, uh, WebRTC has been a great partner. Uh, it's never been easier to connect peers. Uh, uh, it's been never easy. I mean, we, we could just whip it up. I mean, you'd see a demo right coming down the line, right? I mean, it takes not more than half an hour or one hour to get it started, uh, which though the same networking technologies has been there for a while, it's been more than 10 years when we used to do it with plugins uh, for accelerators. Now connecting peers uh, on browsers with WebRTC has never been easier. So yeah, so 